This coming Shabbos will be 70 years from Tovshin Yud Aleph, Tovshin Pei Aleph. 71 years ago in Yud Shvat, which was the Shabbos, was the Stalkus of the Friedrich Rebbe. As we know, during that year, after the Stalkus, as much as the Rebbe was being beseeched and requested from all directions to be Rebbe, he refused. But a year later, the first yard site, Tovshin Yudal of 1951, the Rebbe, there was a Fabrengen in 770 upstairs. No one really knew what's going to happen in specific detail, but in the middle, the Rebbe began the Maimer Basiligami. After one of the Chassidim rose and said, Rebbe, Genuk Siches, or not exact Loshen, Vilm had a Maimer Chassidis. And the Rebbe took the handkerchief, as was the custom by the Rabbeim to hold the handkerchief they tied around his hands, his fingers, and said the Maimer Basiligami. Later, we did hear from Rabbi Moshe Groner, who saw, visited the Rebbe the night before, that in the Rebbe's apartment on New York Avenue, he saw it on the table, a bunch of Svarim open, and it was clear that the Rebbe was preparing something. And now we know. So when we look at the Maimer Basel Ligani Tov Shinyaral, if you take a seat, you see the Rebbe bringing all the Rabbeim, and that became the custom that every year, ever since, the Rebbe would say, the Maimer Basel Ligani on Yud each year covering another one of the 20 chapters throughout the Hemshech. The Kuntus itself that the Rebbe gave out for Basiligani had in it five chapters. And that was given out on Yud Shvat, Shabbos Pasha Boy Yud Shvat Tov Shin Yud. But then subsequently the Rebbe gave out the other Kuntres, which was the continuing of the Hemshech, 20 chapters. So Tov Shin Yud Aleph, the Rebbe covered chapter one, or the general Maimon, Tov Shin Yud Beis, 1952, chapter two. 1953, chapter 3. And so it went until 20 chapters ended, which was in the year Tov Shalamit was the 20th chapter. Everyone wondered what would happen in Tov Shalamit Aleph in 1971, and the Rebbe began a second cycle. Yutzfa Tov Shalamit Aleph, he began again chapter 1, a different type of explanation, and continued again a second cycle. So it has become the custom every year, Yutzfa, to learn the Maimer, of the, ch- the chapter that corresponds to that year. This year we're in chapter 11. Tov Shem Pe'alf. It's chapter 11 already on the fourth cycle. And we have the Rab- Mamorim of the, Rabbe, of the Rebbe, Tov Shem which would be 1961, and 1981, Tov Shem Mamalf. So we have Mamorim also, the Rebbe, on this chapter 11. So I thought appropriate to begin with the lessons. What do we learn? This applied. How do we apply Chapter 11, to our personal lives. So I'm not going to give a sheer class in the whole chapter. To sum it up, and most importantly, in practical application. And being that it's 70 years, we have a particular strength of Shivim Shana, of, uh, in general, Basilagani. Now, the theme of Basilagani actually, interestingly, touches upon the whole purpose of creation. That's how it begins. That's throughout the whole Hemshech of Basilagani talks about that. Then the beginning of creation, the divine was present on earth in Gan Eden with the sin of Chet Eitzadas, the, the Shekhinah was nostalgic to Shekia Ha Rishin, which means literally that the godliness was concealed. A dissonance began, a disparity between heaven and earth. And with each subsequent generation of iniquities, of human beings not being aligned with what God, with a purpose for which they were created, what God set out in his blueprint, the Shekhinah, the divine presence, meaning the divine essence of what the divine wants and in, of, our, of our existence, became more concealed. This was reversed through Avram Avinu, who began to bring it back, began to realign, let's call it, if life is a machine, realign the machine to the operator's, by, with using the operator's manual to the operator's intentions, to the cosmic engineer's intentions, how life should be lived. Yitzchak revealed it more. Yaakov, to seven generations from Avram Avinu, was Moshe Rabbeinu, and after leaving Mitzrayim, and Matan Teda, they built the Mishkan, on earth, reclaiming the way it was in the beginning that the divine heaven and earth fused and joined again. Then, of course, was the Chet Egal. It doesn't discuss this in the Mimer, but just for the full picture, 
and began the continuing journey. But this time now we have the power because Moshe Rabbeinu brought it back. So the whole Aveda throughout Golos, throughout the generations from back then, was to reclaim and reconnect and fuse spirit and matter that this existence, this world, and each one of us should be aligned to the purpose of why we are here, which is to make a home, a mishkan, a home, this world, this material world, for the divine, and not just the divine, the essence of the divine itself. So the Mimer continues and speaks about exactly how to do that, just like Moshe did it in the Mishkan. Friedi Kareb in the Mimer Baslagani explains how all this is done through the building of the Kroshim, through the Karbonis, transforming Ruach Shtus, Shittim, Atse Shittim, using all the examples of all the details of how the Mishkan, how the temple, the sanctuary was built, we now build the same sanctuary through Aravid, Odom Kiyakriv Mekem. And that, that's where it continues going. And then he says, and who fulfills this? So just as then the Eden left Mitzrayim, what were they called? They were called Tzivus Hashem. That's what they were called. And Pasha's boy, and actually in the, in the coming Pasha. So now the connection of Yutzvat the boy, the Basiligani, which the first one was, the first mimer was a Pasha boy when the Stalkos happened. So Friedrich Rebbe begins to explain Sivis Hashem. This is in chapter 10. What is the warning? Why the Jews called Sivis Hashem, the army of Hashem? So in chapter 11, which is the chapter we learned this year, he begins after explaining two interpretations in Sivis, one from the word beauty and one from the word uh, from the beauty and one connected to time. This was in chapter 10. In chapter 11, he says, and a third, a third Pirush, which he already cited, but he didn't explain, is actually Tzivus from the word army, soldiers. Why they called Tzivus Hashem? So he explains, Shem Tzvois is one of the seven names that are not erased, seven holy names, which associated with the Ebershter when he's in a state of fighting war with enemies. Going back to the theme of the whole Hamshech, dealing with a hostile material world, where there's a potential, not only a potential, we see after the Chet, Heitz, Adas, and so on, there's things that are antithetical to the divine. So Tzivus, Tzvois, is the name that Hashem uses when he fights these battles. And the Jewish people who are given the strength from Hashem, that's why they're called Tzivus Hashem. He brings from, from Shari Eder, from Rabbi Yosef Kiktalia, great Makubal, that so Tzivus, the name Tzivus is connected with Kolam al Ask Ask the Refrit Rebbe, what's the What's Kolam al Khamas? What's the connection between the two? Between the name Tzvivas and, and, and the Muhammad, Tzvivas Takif 4. So the Friedrich Rebbe says these words. Tzvivas Takif 4. 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 Tzvivas Takif that's connected to the Netzach. What's the connection of Tzivus with Netzach? So he goes on to explain that when it comes to Netzachen, to being victorious and triumphing in a war against an enemy, that's when the Melech reveals his deepest essence. And he gives the example of a Melech, that's when he's Mevazbiz the Eitzis, that the treasures that he keeps always hidden and is never shown to anyone. Netzachen, reaches the deepest part to the point that the king himself reveals his deepest tre- treasures, to the point that he himself sacrifices his life for Netzachim. He goes on to explain the power of Netzachim, re- reaching higher even than Tainug and Ratzin, which is the highest faculties as we know. So here we go, that Netzach has a certain power, the power of dealing with a hostile enemy and vanquishing and conquering and triumphing reaches the deepest part. Then the Mimer continues after chapter 11, what exactly is this level of Tzvois, of the Eitzer, of, of this level of the treasure. But chapter 11, and especially using the Rebbe's Maimonim where he explains it, so let's sum it up in terms of our own practical terms. We all have our challenges. We all have our adversaries. Different adversity to face it could be personal psychological fears, insecurities, inner traumas, 
due to our own childhood. It could be on the very extreme levels, to the deepest levels of abuse, or more mild, but everybody in this world has their challenges. There's no such thing as no challenges. So usually the way we look at challenges is, okay, you know, it's part of life. Let me get through it. Says this Maimon, as of course emphasized in other places in Chassidus, that a challenge actually brings out the deepest strengths in a human being because it causes you to dig deeper to deal with this challenge. So in essence, even though it's an unwanted challenge and we prefer not to have it, but the bottom line is once it's there, it reaches Netzach into the Etzem HaNesham. And the same thing is Lamaila. The reason God desired Deiru B'Tachtein, we don't know the reason, the Sava Baruch Hu. But one thing is clear, that this touches the deepest parts of the divine. In Atzillus, in worlds where the divine is revealed, and there's no disparity, there's no opponent, there's no antithesis or anything opposing the divine presence, this won't be revealed. Is Davkin Tachtenim, as the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, the lowest level, with the deepest concealment, to the point that you have a world that can actually defy God, Aniva Afsi Eid, that's where Dirilei Lats Musei, Dirilei Lats Musei, the Atzmus itself, Davkin Tachtenim. And all the higher worlds, as he explains in chapter 36 in Tanya, is only, and as the Rebbe explains it in the first Maimon of Basel Ligani, Tavshin Yudalov, is Yeridah Lehem Yizbaruch, why? Because what's the point of Giluim? What's the point of a revelation? Atmos, the divine essence, is always higher than revelation. It's only Tachtenim where the essence is revealed. The essence doesn't need Atzilus. Chavyochel. But the Tachtenim is where the essence is revealed. So it reveals the deepest essence in our own self and also in the divine. So it gives a whole other take on, on challenges, how to deal with an adversary, ad- adversary. With an adversary, I should say. The Netzach, that it's rooted in, and that's the name's voice. So when the Eden left Mitzrayim, that was the strength they needed. They had just dealt with such a dark place. And that's the name that's used to reveal this deeper level. Now, the Rebbe is Maimir especially in 1961, Tavshin Chof he explains the connection. So why does the Rebbe, the Friedrich Rebbe, in the beginning of the chapter, deal with the name Tzvois? Why is that so relevant to us? Saying that it's one of the holy names. And he actually brings that, the Medrash that says that I, God says, I am called by my actions. That's the word. That's Says the Rebbe, bringing from other Maimorim, that you have here two sides to it. On one hand, it's Lefimaisi. In this case, God warring with his opponents, dealing with and, cha- and fighting with his opponents, not obviously physical fighting, but when he deals with the challenges. On the other, it's Ani Nikre. Ani refers to the Abish to himself. And the Rebbe goes into a long discussion of the different opinions in Kabbalah and Exodus about what exactly is this Ani and the Maisi. Because this is a big question in Exodus and in Kabbalah. Who do you daven to? Tzamech Tzadik, a Sherish Mitzvah in the beginning, brings from the Shalsu Tshuvah Srivosh a discussion on this matter where he asked Amokubal, what is this kavona that the Kabbalah talks about? The kavonis, different shamus. The shem kael is in chesed, and shem elikim is in gvura, and shem avayin and teferes. Don't we dive in straight to the Ebrish? In the language of the Sifri and the Posach, the Chol Kareinu Alov, a love v'leilu midasov, a love v'leilu midasov. Directly to the Ebrish, not to his midas. He cites there as well a statement from one of the G'delim, who says, Ani I pray like a child, straight to the Ebrishter. I don't know about all these stations and all these levels. So briefly, the Rebbe brings the Teira of the Alta Rebbe that he said, Mitzoyim Kippur Tov Kuf Nun Vov, cited in the Hayyem Yem 
on Yud Aleph Tishrei, Mitzray Yom Kippur, that there was a Pirush of the Pardis in El Kareno, El Chol Kareno, El Love, El Love, El Love, that El Love is the Eris, that I'm Islamish in the Kalim. There's the Pirush of the Baal Shem Tev that he talks about, that it's the Kalim themselves, which means the Eris that are connected to give energy to the containers themselves. They have their own root. In the Sheir Shakem, the Rishimu, Kayach HaGvul, that, that energizes the containers themselves. A container is energized and comes to life through the air that goes into the keli. But it itself, the container itself, is not created by that air. And the proof is that when the air leaves, you still have the container. Take a simple example with a human being. The neshama energizes and vivifies and gives a human body life, but the body has its own source. Proof is when the neshama leaves the body, the body doesn't immediately decompose. The body still remains. That means it has its own strength. That's what the Baal Shem Tev says. And the Alter Rebbe says, Pira Shaposha, the simple interpretation is that it's talking about atzmus. A law of his atzmus. Not the eiris that are in the containers. Not the energy, the root of the containers. But atzmus himself. Nimna hanim nois. Words of the, Alter, of the Alter Rebbe. That he combines opposites. The paradox. And the Rebbe in the Maimer Tov Shechafalov elaborates at length about this, explaining the chapter 11. Why is this so relevant? It's relevant because this is an introduction to the idea that Netzach, which is Tzvois, since Tzvois is one of the names, and the name is not referring just to containers or to the energy in containers, but all the way to the highest levels, as the Alter Rebbe says. So that tells us that Netzach, Tzvois, the name Svois reaches in the deepest levels like all the other seven names. So why is it unique and higher than all the others? So if you look at the last, next chapters, after chapter 11, chapter 12 and on, you see the Friedrich Rebbe continues. And the Rebbe has my modem on each one of those corresponding chapters. That what? He continues and explains that that level of Eitzer is the level of Maila Maila Aden Ketz. Eitzer Sof is Maila Maila Aden Ketz, Mata Mata Aden Tachlis. The Maila Maila Aden Ketz in the subsequent chapters, he explains, goes all the way to the highest Helem Achad Helem, the deepest levels within the divine. And Dafke Netzach, Dafke coming down below Maisei, Lefi Maisei, Ani Nikra, even though it comes down into Maisei, into action, but Ani Nikra, in other words, God is defined by his actions. The deepest action of all is the action of victory. victory. Being victorious, that reaches the deepest possible level in Atzmus and Nimna Hanim Nois. So the connection is clear that the names of God are not just names, they actually reflect on the highest levels of the divine. And therefore, when it comes to the name Tsevois, which is in Netzach and Hayit, that in that itself is the highest expression of it because it captures this element that. Conquering and being triumphant over an enemy reveals the deepest aces, the deepest treasures within the divine and, of course, within the neshama as well as the neshama connects to the divine. So what do we learn from this practically in our terms, which I think is relevant and critical to explain, which I'll do as well at the end of this program and the chassidus question, more specifically the difference between the three levels. The point is this. The whole purpose of Svidus and the whole purpose of names of God, and we see their names. Why don't we just say there's a neighbor in the world? Why is it so important to discuss whether it's a Lakim or a Vaya and so on? As I said, I'll discuss it a little later more in detail. But the brief answer is because God wants a relationship with us. Of course, the Abishta can just create the world, and we are just subjects to the divine, and we don't need a relationship. A master can be a master, a servant does not need to understand God, does not need to have a feeling for his master. But the Ebershter wanted a relationship. He wanted a shutaf la Kaddish Baruch. He wanted a partnership. And gave us strength and created us in the divine image and gave us a chilek elikam and malmamash vayipach ba'ap of nishmas chayim. So we are created in the divine image, therefore we have a relationship. So it's not just about us doing actions. Both in the Psukim we see, God says, I don't just want you to do actions, I also want you to love me. 
Hayyem Vashavesa Levavecha. No, understand me and feel and have a feeling for me. Once you're dealing with that, then we have a big dilemma. How is it possible that a mortal, limited create, creature, a human being, can have a relationship with something which is completely antithetical, the divine, infinite, beyond infinite, something that has no definition at all. So the Ebrishta, in his infinite wisdom, created a Seder Ishtalshlus. The Seder Ishtalshlus is like a, a ladder that allows us to climb stepping stones to connect the finite with the infinite, earth and heaven. And how do we do that? By following the Teda, we have mitzvahs, mitzvahs that deal with different aspects of our lives. It's not just one thing, serve God. Because God wants the godliness to permeate our details. And as such, that's why there are different names. So obviously, Atzmus, the essence of the divine is beyond all names. It says, Le Islam is Le Ais, Le Kates. He has no name altogether. But he wanted to manifest in ways that we can have a handle to relate. Yes, Taka not Atzmus, Mamish. But Atzmus manifested himself in levels. And that's the whole process of Seder Ishtas, and those are the names, and those are the Svidas. Without going into the detail, what's the difference between names and Svidas, but suffice it to say, these are all on one hand, they're divine instruments. Divine. Not, God forbid, something else. So when you pray, you're praying a love, not to God's attributes. You're praying to God. But how do we have a handle? Like when you, like he brings there from, from uh, the Ravash in the Shesh Mr. Satfila. You pray to Hashem, you want to say Rufur Shlema. So you're praying for Rufur Shlema, you're not praying for Panosa. That's a different Baracha. So basically, you're creating the right channels. Like he says there, when you want to have wine, you don't go to the baker, you go to the wine person. The Tzemach Sadiq explains in this case, obviously, the Abishter is not, is not the, the wine agent or the baker. But it's easier when you relate to Hashem and say, here, this is what I need a Baracha for, something specific here. So it's basically the purpose of the different names is in order to give us something to hold on to that relates to us. And yet at the same time, the Ebrishta manifests and reveals himself through these elements. And that's why you say the Sfiris are iu v'chayu ichad, iu v'garmu ichad. What does that mean? That you, the Ebrishta, is one with your energies and one with your containers. Why do you need Edus and Kalim in the first place? Because that's how we handle, how we can hold on to it. Think of it like a sefer. When you have a sefer, you have an idea, that's the oyer, and the letters on the page that convey the idea are the kalim. Both are divine, but they both have different functions. The kalim is for us to be able to hold on to it. The oyer is divine energy that fits into those containers that we can hold on to. And there you have the different opinions. As I said, I'll discuss part of this later, later in the end of the program. So the, why is this so relevant? Because we can't jump right to the top. Because it's, we're not, it's not, we, we, are not, we have no relationship to the, to the etzem in a way that's on our terms. So we have to go step by step. So first we relate to the, the, the different things that God relates to us, whether it's a b- blessing for b- Bonai, Chaya, Mezene, or Rufua, whatever it may be. And as we climb... We become connected and recognized. But in each level, we always know it's the divine within that particular level. Till you come to a point that's higher than all levels, which is ultimately the Alter Rebbe's Pshat. But we'll talk more about it because also the big question is Alter Rebbe is bringing the other two and he's bringing a different Pshat. The Rebbe says in the Mayim, he wouldn't in any way disagree with the Bashem Tev or the Ramak. So there's a, a beautiful sikha from the Rebbe and this Yud, Yud Shvat Tovshim Mem Beis. Actually, the, in the next, it would be like, next year would be, Mem, it would be Mem Beis would be corresponding to chapter 12, where he explains this, and we'll talk about this some more soon. But the bottom line lesson from all of this in our lives is that we are Tzivu Hashem. We carry this power of Tzava, the Anshei Tzavah are the ones that receive these tremendous treasures when we deal with, our adver- when we deal with adver- adversity, when we deal with challenges. So whatever challenge we're going through, and the deeper the challenge, the more Mevazbas, the more he splurges and reveals these deepest treasures in our own selves and in the divine itself. Which is, of course, a tremendous lesson in life. Okay, 
Now, being that it's Yud Shvat, I wanted to focus mostly on Yud Shvat matters. And um, I wanted to translate this as well in the shlichas we were given. The first Maimur of Basil Ligani, Tovshin Yud Aleph. The Rebbe says, we are the Deir Ashvi, the seventh generation, just like Moshe Rabbeinu, I mentioned before, brought the Shekhinah down, Shechanti Pesechim in the Mishkin. We too, seventh generation from the Altar Rebbe, will bring down the Shekhinah all the way down below, which is basically bringing the Etzem, Deir Eloyiz Baruch, into Tachtenim, which is mostly revealed in the context of Netzach, because we're overcoming, what's, the, what's Tachtenim uniquely? That there is, an opponent, there's a position. There's an adversary. So when we struggle in this world of Tachtenim, which we've been doing for thousands of years, we bring down the Shekhinah, the seventh generation. Now what's the challenges of our time? Well, we have many challenges. It's very different than previous generations. It's true, today we don't have the wars, the persecutions, but we have the challenges, first of all, the apathy within us that comes with uh, comforts. Today we have our different challenges, whether it's due to the COVID-19, due to personal issues and, and other challenges. So we all have our pack, pack, pack of challenges, but the Rebbe told us this is the Deir Ashvi, which means we're finishing the job. We're at the threshold of the end of the, of the job. So what we have to do is dig deeper and reveal the Netzach, the Oitzer, that comes from the highest levels as he will explain later, and we have that strength to see it through and finally reach the finish line. As the Rebbe gave us the marching orders throughout his leadership, but specifically 30 years ago, so it's 30 years. And the Rebbe spoke about Tut al-Zvasir Kent. That's an Asinus Keach that gave us strength, that gives us strength till this very day. And knowing and someone will say, well, there's challenges, this challenge, Gimel Thomas is a challenge, other challenges we have. It comes up, chapter 11 says, there's no challenge that you cannot overcome. And every challenge comes with oitzus, with treasures. And the king himself is ready to sacrifice himself. Some chassidim say, that's talk about what happened, Gimel Tamas. But the Rebbe is with us, especially coming to Yud Shvat, 70 years from when he received the Mechabal the Messias, he assumed leadership continues to give keiches. And just like the Tzivus Hashem that marched out of Mitzrayim, we are the Tzivus Hashem that will march into the Gula Hamitis Vashlema. So you can fabrain much about this, but the lesson is very clear to what we have to be doing today. And every time there's any setback, God forbid, or any situation where a person feels there's a concealment, that's where the greatest strengths lie. Later he'll bring Atta Kel Mestata, that the Atta, even in the deepest concealment, even in the tzimtzum, there lies that etzem, but we have to reveal it. And we do so through going through all these levels, as I mentioned before, and we'll discuss soon more at length. It goes back to the Maimer Basiligani, Tov Shechof Aleph. The Rebbe said that Maimer twice for the record. He said once Friday night at the Yer Yud Shvat in 1961 was Shabbos, so the Rebbe said a Maimer Friday night the, before Baruch Hu, before Kogavri, yeah. and the second time I saw Shabbos. That Shabbos was also Fabreng, and he spoke another Maimon, and there he also discussed some of the matters, but primarily Basiligani was Friday night and Mitzvah Shabbos. And there are differences between these two Maimonim, which is not the place to go into right now, but I want to address these two questions that were asked in regard to this whole topic. Let me read to you. Question number one. Thank you, Rabbi. Hi, Rabbi Jacobson. Thank you for your hard work. And I'm sure your wisdom will be helpful in addressing the fundamental question. This fundamental question, sorry. I'm looking for a straightforward answer on how the idea of the spheres is different from what the Trinitarians say. Yeah. If the spheres are part of his atmos, meaning God's atmos, how could this not be shituf? Shituf is a type of trinity, a type of a partnership. If the spheres are only creations like the world, but to, less, but less, to a less materialized extent, then this would make sense. I have asked around for an answer from some rabbeim, but I've just heard roundabout unclear responses to tell you the truth. Why do we have to complicate what every Jew knows and holds dear? Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echod. I think many people might share my opinion that they just want a relationship with God, and all of this 
theosophizing just complicates it for the average guy or girl. Thank you. Second question. How do we reconcile the three interpretations in a love for Leila Midesov? A love, Kareinu love, calling to him and not to his attributes. The three opinion, interpretations, the Ramak, the Baal Shem Tov, and the Altareb. Okay, so I gave an introduction earlier, which I will repeat again, briefly. The dilemma is, and this is where the Sphiras come in, and the Shemus and, and the whole Seder Shtalshans, is exactly right. There is one God. There's human beings. We know that. We were created in the divine image, in the, put in this world, to serve and to protect, to make a dira b'tachten. So you could just say, God created us. We don't have to have a relationship with God. Just do the mitzvahs. But two reasons we can't say that. Number one, the Torah says it's more than that. It didn't just say, do mitzvahs actions. It also says, v'ahavta Hashem alakecha. You shall love God. V'yedaita Hashem. We have a whole many verses that talk about a relationship. We're also like bonim, like children. We're not just a servant, where a servant doesn't have to understand or feel or have a relationship with his master. We have a relationship. And there's so many psukim and chazal that talk about this relationship. How we pass in halachas down here, that God gave us that power. That's the Krohi. Like you say, Svari, Svara Lamali Krohi. Kro. It's a Pasuk. But then there's also a Svara, a logic to it. What's the logic? God blessed us with a mind, with emotions, as intelligent creatures. He didn't just bless us and create us as inanimate entities and just follow the, the laws. We have free choice. And we were created in the divine image. And there's so much about us that we're told, Mahu Khanan Afatu Khanan. Just as, you're compa- he was, uh, just as he's compassionate, you should be compassionate. says, We should attach ourselves to him. And the Chazal Taka say, can you, can you connect, connect to the Shekhinah? So he says, no. Connect to his attributes. God is kind, you be kind. She have a whole series of Tera, that talks about us emulating God's, God and God's behavior. So here comes the question. If God is so infinitely and beyond infinite, remember when you talk about Atzimu built the Metzius Nimtza beyond anything in existence, beyond any definition. And here we have a world full of definitions. Shabbos is Shabbos and Sunday is Sunday. Pesach is not Shavuos. What is us or Mamaz Daraisa? On Pesach a day later you can eat Chometz. So we see clear boundaries and distinctions and structures. Mitzvahs, once a, mitzvah, once a day passes, over Yami bottle carbona, you can't bring a carbon the next day for two days. We're, in other words, the structures and boundaries of time and space and details, in addition, of course, to the whole structure of existence. So you could argue the whole structure is just a, uh, an illusion. It's all about connecting to God, defying the structure. But that's not the case. Allah is Allah. The same God that is beyond all structure, created structure. And he wants us to elevate that structure and connect it to the divine. So how do you explain that? So you could say, we don't explain it. It's Kabbalah sale. God can do anything he wants. But God wants us to understand his process. You, good God, as the Alter Rebbe Taich, Atzmu saying Sof, Haresa revealed yourself to us to know you. To know you. He gave us a Teireh. He told us to learn Teireh. Learn Teireh, you used to have to use your Seichel. So you could argue, you know what, we use our seichel as much as we can, but we don't know the secrets. But God revealed also some of the secrets. Not all. Obviously, God always remains God and is beyond us. So how do you explain that? That's where the Torah comes into, and Kabbalah comes into play, and talks about this. What's going on? How do we connect to this God? So that's where the Kabbalah reveals, which is also part of Teda that was given at Sinai. That Basara Mamoris Nivra Elam, the Abishta created the world with ten statements. Not one, even though Bresh is not in but he created the world with ten. Because he, def- he created the Yemir Elikim Yehi Oir. Elikim says Yehi Oir. And Yehi Rakia. So he created a structure, the divine words define that structure. Those words are, originate from the ten spheres. And there's sources in Kabbalah and that, in the Sefi Yitzira, 
We say it in Davening, Lecha Hashem Agdula Gvurit Tav Teferes, Vanetzach, Vahed, etc. There are psukim that talk about Lukfedi Baros of Yitzhat of Afasisiv, that there's a world of Atzilus and Bri Yitzhir Asiyah. This is all Teda. This is not human understanding. The Teda gave us and explained to us that God created what's called a Seder Ishtalshus. In simple words, the Seder Ishtalshus is for us to understand the process of how God creates it to the extent that we can understand it. And the process of how we reconnect to the divine. So we begin. First we are a yesh. You're an entity, a self-contained entity. You feel your physical reality. But then you come through contemplation and through Aveda. You come to realize, one second, something created me. There's a divine energy within me, an ashama. There's a divine energy within all of existence. Oyer rekiya. Every species, every grain of sand, every snowflake, every flower, every leaf has divine energy within it. But the divine energy is, is omnipotent, is indivisible. So, so Kabbalah explains the divine energy chose to diminish itself, to conceal itself. Not the divine essence, the divine energy. So there's Mamala Kalaman, there's Seva Kalaman. I don't want to go through the whole picture but briefly, this is actually part of the godly divine system of creating what's called an interface. So the divine, even though the Abish to lay Adam Hu, but he created the idea of, a, he manifested the energy of the divine, manifested in the seer of Adam, it's called Salmenu Kid Musenu. We know the Abish has no Tselem and no Dbus, but he created a world called Atsilis where there's a divine image. That world is contained, it is Vekelem, just like we have an Asham of a Guf, we have keiches hanefesh, faculties that go into the, each part of the body. The, the power of vision in the eye, the power of hearing in the air. The same thing in Natsilis, Edis, and Kalim. So now, when a simple person davens, a child, doesn't know all the Seder Ishtashos. So it says, Amimus Baal Daza Atinuk. Go straight to Atzmus. Obviously, a love, you don't even have to tell him Leilim Midesov, because he doesn't know what the Midas are. He doesn't know any all these attributes. He goes straight to the essence. But that's a child. But as we grow older, and we have the intelligence, and we learn, and we start realizing there's more going on, and we want to permeate our lives, not just pshitas, kabbalah sale. That would be great. But the fact is we also have faculties. And the Ebrister wants a dira betachtenim also within our faculties, within our very being. So now, how do we do that? So the Ebrister gave us a tool. Tools. Align your attributes Allow your, align your faculties with my attributes. Mahu chanun, afatu chanun. Attached to my midas. Not because the midas are an end in itself. It's something for you to hold on to. And as Chassidus explains at length, what says in Kabbalah, this is the dilemma. So how much of it relates to us? How much of it is divine? So generally, the Eid is more reflection of the divine within something. The Keli is more something that has, that has parameters and relates to us. One is more the divine hafla, hafla of expressing the divine awesomeness, which is necessary because you need to know it's divine. The other that relates to us. So in these stepping stones throughout Ishtashalis, there are levels that relate more to us and the divine is more concealed. There are levels where the divine is more revealed and the, the structure is more concealed. But you need both. The interface to be complete, you need existence and its structure and you need to align that with the divine. And hence you come to the different opinions in Kabbalah. Do the Sphiris, are they the Kalim, the structure? Or are they the Eir, the energy? When you daven, we're always daven a love lelimidesov. But the question is, what does this say love? Is it, is it, what exactly is that level? So the Pardis says the level is, the level is Eiris and Kalim. Not the Kalim themselves, the Eiris and Kalim. The Bashantav comes and based on that Izal, who says the Kalim is the main thing with the Shemus are not the air because all the air is Shema Vaya and explains that Samak Sadiq explains as the Rebbe cites in the Maimer is the Shayda Shakalim. In other words, the names when we say 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 its voice, where God is dealing with the enemy, what is it referring to? The structure of the divine as it manifests in structure, or is it as the divine as it's a reflective of the divine energy? So the Bapadis would say is the energy, because Kabbalah is mainly Giluim, transcendence, the divine within all. The Bashemta is Mechadish, Nechsidis Klolis, that it comes into also into the structure of existence. That the very structure, you have a divine dimension in it. That's the root of the Kalim. 
comes the, the Alta Rebbe and says in the Pirush HaPoshet is Atzmus. Nimna Hanim Nois. So the Rebbe in Tov Shimem Beis, I mentioned, Yud Shvat, said the Alta Rebbe is coming and bringing the other, if he didn't bring the other two interpretations, no. But he brings them both and then says the Pirush HaPoshet, almost like negating them. So the Rebbe says, no. The Alta Rebbe is saying, forget it. That after his Bonanu Sechsidus Chabad in the Pardis, and in the Baal Shem Tov, you come to the Maskana that it's really the Pirush HaPoshet, there's Atzmus, Poshet from two ways. Simple interpretation, like the simple Jew praying to the Atzmus, but also Pshitus that's beyond definition. Because at the end of the day, how does Atzmus manifest, whether in Eir or in Kale? It's true, it's not Atzmus, but it's a reflection. But you want to say, Elov Leila Medesov, that the Medesov of the Ebrist are connected one with him. How is that possible? So at the end of the day, you need Nin Hamnim Nois. And the Rebbe says, so even those that don't know the Ramak and the, Baal, and the Baal Shem Tev and all the Kavonis, so they are Mechavan straight to the source. But when you do know, so you could think it's a different interpretation that, that, is, that the, I'm sorry, the Ramak is talking about Eir, the, the, the Baal Shem Tev is talking about Kalim, Sherish Kalim. And that's not like the Pirish HaPoshet. Says the Alter Rebbe, no, that's also the Pirish HaPoshet. But, there, but it's the way you climb a ladder, step by step. First you connect to the Eir. First you recognize that you're davening. You're not davening to God giving you bread or giving you parnosa or a fuah. You're, you're davening to the godliness. What godliness can a person relate to? I don't yet know. Atmos is, is beyond me. So first come to a point of feeling transcendent. Feeling not a kayesh. And a keli, feel like the Eir. Connect to God's divine Eir. Like we say, Asher Kedushonu B'mitzvah Sivitzivonu. The Baal Shem Tov goes deeper and says, after Asher Kedushonu B'mitzvah Sivitzivonu, you're connected to the transcendent divine. Now, connect also to the structure. You say, L'hadlik Ner Chaneke. Al Achilles Matzah. The different brachas we make with specifics. That's the keli. That's this is a specific way when we have to be mechavan to the specifics of this particular mitzvah. Because the kelim also in the very structure of existence, also carries the divine. And then, once you go through that, come to the Eiris and the Kalim and the Sheresh HaKalim, you come to realize, one second, all this is really Atmos. Atmos beyond all definition, because he created these different structures, these divine structures, in order for us to connect with him. So it's for, for, on our terms. But once you go beyond that, and you've gone through the process, comes Chassidus Chabad and teaches that it all is really Atmos. It's all leading to Atmos. All roads lead to Atmos. Eir, transcendence. Same thing with Giluim. The same thing with Kalim. Seva Vemamala. All lead to Lamaila Maila Aden Kates, the Eitzer, which is beyond all structure. And that Atmos wants Adira Betachtene. So then the day you have everything combined. You have the structure that allows us to connect. And then you come to realize that all that structure comes from a place beyond it, nimna nimnois, that can connect iyu vichayu, iyu vigarmui, because they both need that connection, because they're both not atzmus. So only atzmus that's beyond any structure, beyond any definition, even beyond, beyond definition, can in turn connect a love with midesov, can connect the eir, the connect himself with the eir, connect himself with the keli. But it can only happen once you go through the whole process step by step. First, you have to relate to it in a way that's internal. When the Abish said to Moshe Rabbeinu, no person can see me and live. But then he says, Upon lo yiro, and that uh, the Rebbe explains, and the Ponim Yofis also explains it, that um, the Abish says, no person, you can see my back directly. You can also see my face by not looking. So when you go through the steps, and first you relate to a divine that you can relate to on your terms. It's not ponai. And then you can relate to a next higher level of the divine, as the divine created the tzimtzum and created the reshimo and creates the kalim, which is even a deeper level of divine because the fact to create kalim, a structure takes more so-called divine, a deeper divine energy than just to reveal the divine. That Maramak is revealing the divine, the Baal Shem Tov is the elokus within the kalim, that infinite power within the finite, which is, a, which is a deeper, because it's an infinite that's not expressive as the infinite in Giluim, in Eir, then you come to that which is beyond infinite itself, Atmos, 
They love Leila Medesa of the Pirush HaPashut. That's beyond both of them. And that's why he has the power to do both. The Avedis HaKedus says, just like you have the power in Bligvul, you have the power in Gvul. That would be, power in Bligvul would be like the Ramak. Power in Gvul would be like the Kalim. And the Alter Rebbe comes and says, that Gufa that there's those powers comes from a higher level of Atzmus. And that's when you can relate even to the face. By not looking. But it's when you go through the levels that you could relate to, you come to a point where you can experience the Atmos completely beyond. So even though a child knows that even without going anywhere, but before you, before you go through all these steps, it's a very different. To say a child says, I don't know, it's different than a, someone who knows the, Balsh, the Ramak and the Baal Shem and says, I don't know. Because that's an I don't know that comes informed and your whole being has, has prepared yourself to reach that highest level. Okay. With that, we will, uh, I'm going to stop here, even, especially the, the essays I'll do next week. So with that, let's conclude. Everyone should have a very meaningful Yud Shvat, Shivim Shana. Learn the Maimer, especially Pedik Yud Aleph, and the Rebbe's explanations on it. I hope this was helpful. And most important, implement it. We have these deepest levels. So we have the levels that deal with every challenge, and the level of, uh, the, of the Ramak, which means we transcend it through Eir. We have the Baal Shem Tev, that means we enter in it, and we realize that the challenge itself comes from a deeper place. And then we have the power of Atmos, that means that the deepest levels of the Eitzer, of the treasures, from Netzach, that goes all the way to the point that is Mavazbis, all the treasures, the deepest treasures, Maila Maila Aden Ketz, and that all comes into Lamata Mata Aden Tachlis, into this world, Making a dirbe tachtein. Meaningful yuchvat, everyone.